So you've probably found yourself wondering at some point in time, what does a Mavic 3 Pro look like when it's completely caked in dirt, dust, and mud? And also, what does it look like when the camera just doesn't want to stay in place? Well, that is now my Mavic 3 Pro, which is basically completely destroyed. Now, with this video, because of this drone and its current state, I've got three topics that I want to discuss, three things that I really want to hit on, because there's a lot to think about when a drone crashes. Sometimes it can set you back financially. Sometimes it can set you back in your head mentally because you might be a little bit gun shy, but ultimately it's something that you can learn from. And that's what we're gonna do in this video is learn from a crash because unfortunately it wasn't even my fault. So I'm sure everybody wants to know what happened to my drone. Here's a quick look at the flight logs. As you can see, I have an ESC error and the drone comes tumbling down to the ground. And as I see the drone through my controller falling from the sky, my immediate thought is, man, I really wish I was recording video, but I wasn't. So the only thing that I have to share with you is this completely destroyed Mavic 3 Pro. Uh, and also that flight log that shows the ESC error up in the top corner. Now, I was actually on a job site flying my drone, taking some stockpile measurements. So I was actually taking the photos manually to then stitch later using drone deploy. And after I did the first pile, I was then looking at a set of plans to figure out where I had to fly to next. And as I'm looking at my set of plans, out of the corner of my eye, I see the drone remote and I see the screen and it falling from the sky and eventually hitting the ground. Now, as for a quick damage assessment to the actual drone itself, it actually fared pretty well for falling from... I'd say about 100 feet high. There's no damage to any of the legs. They still fold. They still work completely fine. They're nice and rigid. There's really not any give to them, which is nice. So those survived. I can't say the same for the gimbal, though. That has become completely separate from the drone. So that would need to be completely replaced. I'd also need a new ESC in the one that failed. And I'm also missing a propeller here, which I can only imagine fell off during the impact. So look, everybody loves a good drone crash story. And I wish I could come here and say that I was doing something really awesome, trying to get this really awesome shot. And I hit a tree or... You know, I crashed at the very end and I still got the shot, but no, it was just hovering there and fell out of the sky. And this brings us to the first thing that I want to hit on in this video, and that is to be careful with your drone. I actually made a video, gosh, probably two years ago at this point, where my Inspire 2 completely fell out of the sky on its own. I had just gotten it fixed. I took it out for its very first test flight and the drone spun like a top fell to the ground and was completely destroyed. For me, this was a huge wake up call because I had no control over what happened with the drone in that moment. And thank God when I did my very first test flight, it was over a golf course where literally nobody was at, right? So it was a nice open area and I could test it. But what if something didn't happen on that flight? What if something happened on the next flight or the flight after that or the flight after that? What if something happened when I was 10 flights in after that repair over a busy neighborhood photographing or taking video of a home and the drone fell on somebody's car or it fell on somebody's roof or fell on somebody inside of the neighborhood. Like these are things that you need to think about and you can't always mitigate that risk 100%, but it's something that you need to be aware of. So for example, with this very crash right here with my Mavic 3 Pro that <laughs> I can't stop looking at, it looks absolutely terrible. With this drone, it fell over a job site. There was nobody there, which was fine, right? It fell on some grass I, when I picked it up. Of course, I had to use a different drone to finish off my shoot. But at that point in time, I was happy that it happened in an area that wasn't that populated, right? I do a lot of flying in the city. I do a lot of flying in neighborhoods. And if this drone fell, let's say over the Schuylkill River and fell into the water, it would be completely gone. I'd have no shell to go and recover. So these things can happen at any time. And the first thing that I really want to harp on in this video and that I really just want to dig in everybody's brain is to be careful with your drone because anything can happen at any time. Now, moving on to point number two here, I am very upset with myself that I decided to use one of my most expensive drones to complete a service of mine that is one of the more inexpensive options that I offer. Like a stockpile measurement is really volume based, right? It's something that you want to try and offer at a lower cost. So more people use you. So then you can bring in more business, right? That's just kind of how I market the stockpile of measurements because they're very easy to do and require like no post-processing work. It's just flying, taking your photos, uploading them to drone deploy, finding the measurements, and then sending them off to your client. It's very easy, which again is why I charge so little for it. And then I go and get more work because of it. But like, why would I use a drone that is several thousand dollars to complete? complete that task when I could just use a Mini 4 Pro. Like this drone is so much less expensive and would get the job done in the same way. Like I guarantee you that if any of the shoots that I do for any given week, whether they're real estate related, construction related, or if they're just for a general client that wants aerial photos and videos, they wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the Mini 4 Pro and the Mavic 3 Pro's camera. Now I will say that I think the reason people would buy the more expensive drone is for the overall better experience when using it. Like I like the ability to fly faster and fly for longer with my Mavic 3 Pro. 
well, honestly, they have the same flight time, but I prefer all the conveniences of having a larger drone like the Mavic 3 Pro over the Mini 4 Pro, and that's why I do fly this drone often, but I think to myself, like, if I'm going on doing a shoot that's only several hundred dollars, and then I go and fly my drone that's several thousand dollars and break it, I'm now out of money for that shoot and maybe other shoots in the future. I understand it's like a risk of doing business, a cost of doing business, but it's just something that's tough to swallow. So after all this ranting, the second point that I want to make is that no matter what you're doing out there with your drone, chances are you could do it with a cheaper option out there. So if you're somebody that's looking to get a drone, go for something that's less expensive because chances are nobody's going to know the difference in the quality of the images that you produce. Now, finally, the third point that I want to hit on in this video, how is it getting your drone repaired by DJI? I've gotten a lot of drones, unfortunately, repaired by them, but the process is always super smooth, very easy, and it's also very affordable. So this section of the video is going to be about my experience actually getting the drone repaired, which is still sitting here in pieces, you could say, caked in mud. So let me ship this drone off, and once I get it back, I'll update you about how long and how much it costed to fix my Mavic 3 Pro. All right, so I finally got my Mavic 3 Pro back from DJI after being repaired. They've turned it around fairly quickly, and it was also an inexpensive fix. So what I want to do in this portion of the video is go over my experience using DJI's repair services outside of their care refresh plan because I didn't opt to purchase that for my Mavic 3 Pro. Instead, I was just going to pay the bill when it was sent to me. And then what I want to do is do a first flight with my Mavic 3 Pro out in the frigid temperatures here in Philadelphia. So of course, when this is shipped back to you, it's not going to be sent in like the full on packaging that you would receive if you were to purchase a brand new Mavic 3 Pro. But instead, oh, look at that. It actually does come inside of this small little box here. So this here is the Mavic 3 Pro that I received back from DJI. We can go ahead and open up the box to reveal the actual drone itself. I don't usually do live unboxings here, but we'll switch it up for this video. All right, so tear the box open and it just comes inside of this small little plastic uh, wrap. I'm speaking from experience because I've gotten drones fixed from DJI in the past. And looking at this drone, each and every time I've gotten it fixed from DJI, it looks brand new. It still has stickers on it. It comes with brand new propellers. It comes with a brand new never used propeller guard and kind of like gimbal guard here. The way you can tell that it's brand new and never used is because this section right here isn't worn out. This leather strap will sometimes get worn out and a little bit warped when you use it, um, you know, from taking it on and off. So I have pretty much a brand new drone here from DJI, which is awesome because I feel like there was a couple of issues with my drone that I wanted a drone outside of, of course, the actual crash that I got into. Now, there's probably two things that you want to know. How much did it cost me and how long did it take DJI to actually get the drone back to me from the time that I sent it? So it only cost $68 and it took DJI 21 days or three weeks to turn around this repair from me shipping it to them to me receiving it back from them. So all in all, I could not be happier with my repair service because it was inexpensive and it was quick. Now, to give you a quick breakdown or a quick detailed view of like the entire timeline, Line. I crashed my drone on Thursday, December 28th. I shipped it on Friday, December 29th. It was then received by DJI on Saturday, January 6th. Of course, the holidays kind of slowed things down there. They didn't end up diagnosing my drone or kind of looking at it until Tuesday the 9th. They then quoted me and I paid on Wednesday the 10th. They completed the repair on Thursday the 11th and shipped it out that same day. And then I received it on Wednesday the 17th. Now, even though they say they completed my repair, DJI actually doesn't repair your drone and then send it back to you. But instead, you get basically a brand new drone or a refurbished drone or something like that. So again, this inside of this plastic here is not my Mavic 3 Pro. This is a completely different Mavic 3 Pro. But again, this is something that is pretty much brand new. It's right off the shelf, which is awesome because I feel like I can now hit the ground running with my drone. And also it just speeds up that repair process. And I don't have to spend that time waiting for them to actually clean my drone, fix it, and then send it back to me. So it's it's definitely expedited in that regard. Now, I guess I got lucky in this situation. I'll put my invoice up here on the screen for what I actually had to pay. Again, it was $68. The $65 charge of the repair service fee was actually the most expensive thing that I had to pay for, but then I also had to pay $3 for a gimbal lower vibration absorbing board. 
and that was it. $68 for that repair for my camera basically coming entirely detached from the drone. 68 bucks, in my opinion, is definitely a good price. So what I wanna do is bind up my Mavic 3 Pro to my RC Pro, throw a battery in, and hop outside to do a very first flight. And remember, it's cold, so this is not going to be a very long flight. Yeah, so you can just tell this thing is like brand spanking new. I just took all the stickers off. There's absolutely no blemishes, no marks on it whatsoever. So again, that is the good thing that comes from crashing your drone and paying to get it fixed, is you get a somewhat brand new drone. Okay, so let's do our first flight here with the Mavic 3 Pro. The new Mavic 3 Pro. Now, I just pretty much put this thing in automatic. I don't even have an SD card in here. Again, this is just to kind of get my feet wet with this drone again. You might be wondering what I've been flying during my time here without the Mavic 3 Pro. Uh, I was flying the Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3. So those were kind of like the two drones that I was flying in tandem. But boy, oh boy, did I miss the camera on this drone. Like the clarity is just out of this world. So we're recording in 4K. We're going to buzz on down to the river or on down to the bridge over the river. In my opinion, the Mavic 3 Pro and Air 3 are like neck and neck in terms of performance. So I wasn't really missing the performance as much because the Air 3 is an all out beast when it comes to flying. Um, I do have to change my gimbal settings here. You can see this thing is super quick. But the one thing I did miss is like the actual camera quality, the image quality coming from this drone because it's just out of this world. Also, I was flying the Mavic 3 Cine a little bit. I do have that drone as well, which I was using before the Mavic 3 Pro even came out. And when using that drone, I really did miss the medium telecamera. I missed being able to use the 3X zoom. I actually was on a construction site. I was flying my Mavic 3 Cine because I was trying to do some hyperlapse stuff with the one second interval. And uh, I missed being able to use my 70 millimeter when trying to capture the workers working. Now I was able to use the 7X zoom, but I felt like that was a little bit too tight. So the 70 millimeters on the Mavic 3 Pro really does make a difference. And of course on the Air 3, it makes a difference as well. It's nice, we have like absolutely no wind today. It's been so windy around here, but this drone is getting after it up and down the water. This is always a great time to do like a first flight over a nice unpopulated area over the water, over a field, over something like that. As I mentioned before, when my Inspire 2 went down, that was a very scary situation. And if the drone went down here in the water, I suppose I'd probably be screwed. But again, we're in a nice open area here where if the drone falls down, it's not gonna hurt anybody, it's not gonna damage any property. So that really is, in my opinion, always like the first thing you wanna do when you get a drone, just make sure it's okay. As I, as I mentioned it in the beginning of this video. So I know that we covered a lot of ground here in a video that I probably didn't anticipate making unless my drone crashed. But look, being careful with your drone is always of the utmost importance. I think that it's really important just for the, the hobby and for the industry in general. Uh, also, don't go and buy a drone that you think is going to be too expensive. Don't spend all of your money on that Mavic 3 Pro because you want the best image quality. If the drone is only a very small part of your workflow, if it's only a small part of the services that you offer, go look at the Mini 4 Pro, go look at the Air 3, spend less money on that drone because if it crashes, you're kind of SOL. Uh, and also the final thing is um, DJ Care Refresh. I think that DJ Care Refresh is a great thing to purchase. I think that if my drone was way more messed up than it was, if there was way more issues than just camera damage, if there was issues to the actual camera housing and body itself, if there was issues to the actual drone body itself, it could have been a much more expensive repair. For me, I got lucky, but it's kind of the risk that I take when I fly these drones. Um, and also just kind of make sure you have a backup if it's something that you do often. Like the Mavic 3 Pro is the drone I fly each and every day. And when it went down, I was sad because it's the drone I use every day, but I had backups in place. So having a backup is always super important. Look, it is like 20 degrees outside. So I'm gonna wrap up this first flight with the new Mavic 3 Pro. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got any thoughts, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.